So to simplify exponents, I thought we'd start with a hot mess problem. First of all, I love when I see a zero. Woohoo! This zero is touching, is outside the parentheses. So that means it's touching everything in the parentheses. And that means all of this just equals one. Bye bye. So amazing. So next, I'm going to look at the next set of parentheses. Here's parentheses. And remember, we always do parentheses or groups first. So if I can simplify anything inside here, I need to do that first just to make my problem easier. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's look inside. Two, oh, he's by himself. He's fine. Oh, look, there are two x's, x negative 2 and x4. We are multiplying, so we add the exponents, which gives us 4 minus 2, or x2, and then a single y, and that is all raised to the negative 3. This guy is a 1, so he is gone, and I've got negative 5, x negative 2, y6. The next thing I want to do is the exponent, which is the negative 3. We have raised a power to a power, which is extremely powerful, so we're going to multiply. But first, we need to make sure that everything here has an exponent. So the 2, uh-oh, it's missing its exponent, so it's a 1. The y is missing it. There's a 1 here. Oh, and the negative 5 is missing an exponent, so that's the 1 there. I always recommend going and putting exponents on everything before you start messing around with exponents just so you don't accidentally make a mistake. Now, again, this negative 3 is outside of these parentheses, so that means everything inside here gets that negative 3. Again, a power to a power is multiplying, and we can distribute. So that gives us 2 to the 1 times negative 3 times x2 times negative 3 and y1 times negative 3. And again on the bottom, we still have negative 5 to the 1, x to the negative 2, and y to the 6. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to simplify that. We have 2 to the negative 3 times x to the negative 6 times y to the negative 3. Whew, so many negatives. And on the bottom, we have negative 5 to the positive 1, x negative 2, y 6. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to move any exponents that are negative. So a negative exponent just means that instead of multiplying, you're dividing repeatedly. So we're going to move things to make it positive. So right now, this 2, negative 3, we can move this down. We do not need to move this because it has a positive exponent. We can have a negative number. We've always had ne negative numbers, and they're fine. We do not have to move them, but we do need to move the 2 down. So we're going to move the 2 down, and that makes it 2 to the positive 3. We're going to leave the negative 5 down here. And then we're going to move some more things. This x negative 2 I'm going to move up, and that makes it positive. So if I move this up, it becomes positive, and I've got to move this down. So confusing. x6 on the bottom. And there's already a y6 down here. And now I need to move this y3 down to make it y positive 3. Notice, everything has a negative exponent now, and now I'm going to go ahead and simplify. Okay, so first of all, 2 to the third is 8, because it's 2 times 2 times 2, which gives me an 8 in the denominator. So this is going to be 8 times negative 5, and that's negative 40. And I have two x's on top of six x's. So I have like two x's on top of one, two, three, four, five, six. This guy is bottom heavy. There are more x's in the bottom than in the top. So when we simplify these, right, by making ones, we leave a one up top, and then we have four x's left in the bottom. And then we have six x, six y's and three more y's. So we have nine y's. Now remember, these guys were all in the bottom. So just because this got simplified out doesn't mean they move to the top. They stay in the bottom because x divided by x is actually a, leaves a 1 and a 1. So there's a 1 still on top here, and that is your final answer. And there's a bunch more practice on delta math.